This week on The Stampede, the Mustangs return to the hilltop with the iron skillet in hand. Going around and getting a bunch of text messages after the game, family calling me, Facebook, everything. And get right back to work. At 6.05, you know, when the alarm goes off, it's back to the grind again and um, just uh, keep pushing through it. To prepare for one of their toughest matchups yet. And this is a big one because they won the championship last year and we lost them. Also, Zach Line and some of his teammates upgrade their pads. And a visit with playmaker Darius Johnson. I like to score touchdowns. I love to score touchdowns, so whenever an uh, opportunity presents itself, I'm always trying to get the end zone. The SMU Mustangs return to practice the Monday after their big victory over TCU, calm and steady, amidst the chaos and commotion that a big victory brings. My cell phone was blowing up on Facebook page, a lot of congratulations and pats on the back. SMU! SMU! Good game, good win, you know, you guys are on the map now, all that sort of stuff, SMU's back, all that stuff. SMU! I have a bunch of friends going to TC that were still saying congratulations. They were really excited for me because they've been watching me play and just coming home and just seeing the atmosphere of people just absolutely excited. Going around and getting a bunch of text messages after the game, family calling me, Facebook, everything. You know, people I haven't talked to since my freshman year just saying, hey, I know it's been a long time, but a great win. The way they rushed the field and everything just made us, you know, I mean, it was, a, it was a good win. It was big because you could tell how much the fans enjoyed it, and it was really big for the, the school environment more than just, just the team. And uh, it was really nice winning for the seniors, though. But from the beginning, the motto on the hilltop has been one week at a time. You know, the team that we're playing for that week is the biggest game of the year for us because they're in our way of being the best that we can be. They're not a team, they're a target, and our mission has always been to destroy the target. This is our, uh, our biggest game because our next game and we're just taking one game at a time and focus on each team as we go. Just when we came back after waking up uh, at 6.05, you know, when the alarm goes off. So, I mean, it's back to the grind again and um, just uh, keep pushing through it. The Ponies will need 100% focus for their next opponent, a rematch of last year's conference championship with University of Central Florida. They do a great job uh, in their scheme. They, they make it kind of throw it underneath, you know. They, 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 they uh, when you go down, the field if you don't put it on the money they make you pay and uh, you know we'll have some chances during the game to take our shots but you know we got to execute this is a big game for the fact you know we a rematch coach herring coach joe herring's always uh talking about how when they walk off the bus they're gonna have our our conference championship rings on so you know it's a kind of little revenge game <laughs> But this is a team that's coming together on both sides of the ball. Quarterback J.J. McDermott has won every game he started. Fires, end zone, touchdown, Johnson! Running back Zach Line has gone over 100 yards in four out of five games this season, and a talented receiving core keeps getting better with each passing week. I feel like we're in sync as an offense, and I feel like he's in sync with all the receivers, so... You know, we're just, uh, we're just vibing right now. Everybody's kind of on the same page. So. There are going to be a lot of great football players on that field. We think that we have a great football team. I'm sure they feel like they've got a great football team. How we match up is really important because they've got an outstanding secondary. It's the strength of their defense. I think we've got a great receiving core. It's the strength of our offense. Let's go! And on defense, the Mustangs are 14th in the nation and second in the conference after UCF in total defense. We're definitely clicking on all cylinders, but you never want to be complacent. We're always you know, striving to improve, and so there's definitely areas where we can improve, and so we're, we're thankful and blessed for what we've accomplished thus far, but after each game, you have to put it, quickly put it away and move on to the next, so we don't want to harp on too much of what we've done in the past because it's over and done with. we still got a lot of season left to play, and so our, our eyes are looking forward, and we're uh, just getting ready for the next opponent. And right now, that's UCF, so we're doing all that we can to get ready for them and uh, make sure we keep this ball rolling. Saturday's game is shaping up to be an epic battle between two well-coached and mature teams.
Both teams are contenders for the CUSA crown, both with explosive offenses and punishing defenses. I think that we've got a very mature and a very focused football team, so um, we're really geared on the next game, uh, winning the next one. And right now, as we sit here, you know, we have the opportunity to win number five. Okay, you got forced outside release on the go, because if, if they start zone dog in the maroon, we're going to audible to the go route to the tray side. But before they could take on Central Florida, the Mustangs had a bye week which was good for healing and bad for a team hungry to play again. We had a bye week at the right time for us physically and psychologically because it gave us a chance during that week to wash out the win over TCU. We have to recognize that TCU is done, UCF is now, and we better get ready to play a great football team. Just that bye week helped us like, you know, build down the hype and get refocused on UCF. And this is a big one because they won the championship last year and we lost them. And, uh, and so, you know, our guys are real focused on uh, putting out a good performance this, uh, this weekend coming up. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a very solid and really good group again. And so we're going to have our hands full, but uh, the guys are excited to get after it. The bye week is, uh, you know, it's over and done with and now it's good. Uh, it's, it's, it's time to get back on the field. Play like a top 10 team now, okay? Every time we get the ball, no mistakes. June Jones understands the advantages of thinking outside the box. I love the fact that my boss is an outside the box thinker. I mean, some of the stuff that he's done to help us is so out there for a football coach, right? It's fun with him because this is just another one of the things that he, you know, a little bit of his genius. He also knows that injuries can wreck a team, so injury prevention is a priority. So it's perhaps not surprising that SMU is one of the first colleges to embrace the protective qualities of Kevlar. Ultimately, as a physician, that's what it comes down to, is, is there something that can protect your athletes better than what's out there? And, uh, and that's why it's been interesting to see what's happened with uh, Zach Line. You're always looking for an edge in, in product development, and if you could uh, provide more life to a guy that's as productive as Zach Line, you do whatever it takes to help him become not only a better athlete, if he, be, if he becomes a better athlete, I become a better equipment manager, we become a better football team. Mustang running back Zach Line dislocated his left shoulder earlier in the season, but thanks to specially designed Kevlar padding, he continues to be a force. Um, North Coast State game, I, I kind of landed on my shoulder a little weird. Um, wasn't kinda, wasn't a blow, it was more of like an elbow coming up on my shoulder, so it separated that game. And uh, that next week, they kinda, there's some guys from Unequal Technologies came in and said they wanted to fit me and they were, they were gonna go fit Romo. And then uh, the next game, I took a couple hits, kinda took a couple blows to the shoulders. It just felt more like a you know pressure around the shoulder instead of a, you know instead of a direct contact. So it was pretty good. June was really sold on this uh, on this padding. So uh, he came down and he said, can we expand into some of our other players? So now we got about 12, 15 guys in this and uh, we've legally modified, put it in shoulder pads, thigh pads. As far as Kevlar is concerned, it's a DuPont product. It's been around for a lot of years. Kevlar is primarily used in bulletproof vests and body armor for police and soldiers but is now used in football to protect injuries such as broken ribs from further abuse. We were in touch with the Cowboys trainers. John spoke with the trainers directly and, uh, and said, hey, you should look at this. And, uh, and so tried to facilitate that for them, not for the, for the press, but for, because it might help them get back quicker. NFL quarterbacks Michael Vick and Tony Romo embraced the Kevlar technology first. When, when, the, when the boys at uh, Dallas Cowboys, they knew about the Vic experience, and when Romo had his rib problem, it was like, light bulb, let's find out what the heck he used. And sure enough, two days later, we were in the locker room, and then SMU hears about it, Dr. Baker brings it across town, and it was one of those kind of things, says, hey, Unequal's here. 
uh, you should see him. Zach uh, was the first uh, guy that we put in, and he couldn't believe the uh, the difference and the and the hits that he took. So we uh, we got it and put it in uh, for, you know a lot of the other guys, uh, and I'm sure we'll have it in everybody's that before the year's out. So unequal technologies, the leader in the field, outfitted the ponies with new pads designed to absorb blows and protect the players from injury. If we got into a, a gun battle with somebody, they may, I mean, we may not come out of it unscathed because all the Kevlar guys have a gun. I like to score touchdowns. I love to score touchdowns, so whenever an uh, opportunity presents itself, I'm always trying to get in the end zone. Look to the corner, touchdown! One of SMU's big play threats is junior wideout Darius Johnson from Hightower High School in Missouri City, Texas. I was recruited pretty high in high school, I guess. I guess you could say that, but it was a fun time. We went to stay my senior year, it was cool. June sent me over to Hightower to look at these kids. And I saw Isaiah Sweeney, and I saw, you know, they had, I think, three guys went Division One on that team, but that it was the junior kid that was out there of the four receivers that I liked the best because he just had something about him. And I went back and I told Junior, I said, yeah, they're all offer guys, but I'm telling you, June, there's a junior at that place that's a little bit special. His senior year during the state tournament, he was the best, in my opinion, he was the best high school football player in the state of Texas. As the stakes got higher, he played better. And that's when we knew for sure we had something really special. If Darius has a specialty, it's the Sports Center caliber catch. Take a moment and enjoy these grabs. They're tens on the difficulty scale, but Darius makes them look easy. On a Parks recover bubble. There's Johnson's screen pass. Gets by Olivo. Johnson sideline. Most importantly, Darius plays big in big games. Last year, he caught nine balls against UCF in the CUSA championship game. He was also the team MVP in the Armed Forces Bowl. The drone all day to throw has a man wide open across the middle and out to the 39-yard line, Darius Johnson. I knew that it was going to be a big game for the inside receiver, really all the receivers because of the coverage they played. So I just did what I had to do. Uh, Perfect calls by Coach Jones throughout the game. And in the battle for the iron skillet, he torched TCU secondary with 12 catches for 152 yards and two extraordinary touchdowns. A third and eight, quick snap, McDermott from the shotgun, looking into the end zone, yes! fires, yes! caught, leaping grab, touchdown Darius Johnson. McDermott looking to his right, now he's gonna fire it deep down the left side, he's got Darius yes! Johnson, <laughs> diving backwards, touchdown SMU! SMU's receiver core is a tight-knit group, and Darius feels a responsibility to mentor the younger wideouts. I can help them out, uh, whether it's on field, off the field, make them mature, um, because college is it's a lot different from high school. The transition that high schoolers have to make to college, is, it's a big jump, so. Um, just helping the young ones, that's what it's about. Virtually every D1 player dreams of a career in the NFL. And if you have the talent, SMU's coaching staff can get you to the next level. I do have pro aspirations and uh, just really going out every day and just having fun, practicing, getting better at the things I uh, can improve in. It's always room for improvement, so just trying to uh, improve on the practice field. But June Jones wants to prepare his players for life off the football field. In his three years on the hilltop, Darius has grown as a man, as well as a football player. It brings joy knowing that uh, I did something to raise my whole team up, uh, seeing the smiles on, smiles on their faces, so it is awesome. On a sun-splashed Saturday afternoon, SMU finally squares off against the University of Central Florida. Last year, Coach George O'Leary's Knights defeated SMU 17-7, to 
in the Conference USA Championship game. UCF returns with a 3-2 record that includes an impressive win over Boston College. The Knights' defense seems unstoppable. Given that SMU's run-and-shoot offense has rolled up over 1,500 yards in just the last three games, this should be a classic matchup of strength on strength with everything to gain. The winner will emerge as the team to beat in CUSA. Outside, the fans excitedly stream in, ready for action. But deep inside the complex, the team is all focus. The locker and tape rooms are amongst the loudest rooms on campus during the week. But on the day of the game, it's as quiet as can be. For the players, there's nothing left to say. Now it's all about harnessing their determination and focus for the battle that lays ahead. But the clock winds down. Finally, it's game time. And the silence <laughs> is broken. I am only one! I am only one! But I am someone! But I am someone! I can't do everything! I can't do everything! But I can do something! But I can do something! And that which I can't do! And that which I can't do! I must do! I must do! And by the grace of God! By the grace of God! I will do! I will do! I believe! I believe! I am someone! I am someone! SMU! SMU! Monitor! Monitor! Monitor. Let's go, boys! Bring it up! Bring it in! Bring it in! Bring it in! The Mustangs feel rusty from the bye week. They don't show it. A big punt return by Richard Crawford pushes the ball into the red zone. And a uh, spiraling kick that'll be caught at the 35 by Crawford. Coming left to the 40, has a wall to the 50, to the 45, 40. Cuts inside of the putter to the 30, to the 25, and he'll finally be tackled from behind. Jay McDermott facing a four-man line and a handoff sack line going right to the 10, turns the corner at the 5, dives over a man into the end zone. Touchdown, SMU! And from there, the Mustang offense simply has too many weapons. Wilkerson breaks a tackle 40, a field to the 50, and into UCF territory. For J.J. McDermott, here comes a blitz. He's going to throw it underneath. Caught Darius Johnson at the 25-20, to the 15, to the 12-yard uh, line as he breaks tackles. As the first quarter winds to a close, sophomore walk-on Chase Hover attempts a field goal from the UCF 26. Good, and Hover's a perfect five for five on the year. On the Tampa, did they bump and run you guys? Tampa? Yeah, the Tampa left. Both yeah, guys press. Yeah. Inside? Yeah, inside. Coach Frank Gans is always pushing his special teams to make big plays. Richard Crawford fields a punt on his own eight and takes it to the house. Gets this one on the bounce at his own 10. Breaks a tackle going left at the 15. He breaks another tackle to the 20, to the 25, 30. He's in the <laughs> open field and he is gone. There's nothing but red jerseys around him. Richard Crawford to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, SMU! Very large play. In the first half, UCF holds the ball for more than 20 minutes compared to less than 10 for SMU. But Richard Crawford's punt returns, coupled with a strong bend but don't break effort by the defense, gives SMU the advantage. As the teams head for the locker room, the score is SMU 17, UCF 3. Today we are honoring Peruna Aid for his 14 years of dedicated service. Without question, things are changing for SMU football. And that goes for their mascot, Peruna, as well. He is currently being honored in South Bend, Indiana by the College Football Hall of Fame in their exhibit of famous mascots. The Shetland Pony, who celebrates home game touchdowns with a gridiron gallop, is in his eighth incarnation. Until today, when Peruna 8 is officially retired and replaced with Peruna 9. And now, Please welcome Peruna Nye! With the change made official, the Mustang Faithful and Peruna Nine are ready for her first touchdown trot. As usual, the atmosphere in the locker room is different from that on the field. Let's be the champions of this whole conference. Not just our conference, the whole thing. Play defense, get them off the field. The Mustangs continued to dominate in the second half. 
After missing two games with a knee injury, Cole Beasley capped off a stellar return to the gridiron by putting the ball in the end zone for the only score of the third quarter by either team. JJ, long count, takes a snap, quick throw, right side, caught him in that round, Cole Beasley, touchdown SMU! The Knights score on the first play of the fourth quarter, bringing them within 14 points of the Mustangs at 24 to 10. Just keep coming, man. I mean, we're going to get him holding it one time. But on SMU's one very yards, next play from UCF. scrimmage. JJ, he's got to fire this one deep down the left side. Yeah, it comes the corner to 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, SMU! The touchdown was redshirt freshman Derek Thompson's second of the year, and it put the game out of reach. The final score, SMU Mustangs 38, University of Central Florida 17. A decisive victory for the Mustangs that establishes them as a Conference USA powerhouse. After the game, attention was focused on 11-year-old Kellen Lawson, the honorary coach of the game. Kellen has cerebral palsy, but knows the heat of battle as much as the SMU strongmen he inspired this week. Coach Jones recently found out about Kellen, his heroic battle to overcome his condition, and his desire to one day coach football. Way to beat the snot out of you. <laughs> He clearly found a place in this team's heart. The victory was SMU's fifth in a row, their longest winning streak in four years. The Ponies are 5-1 and one overall and unbeaten in three conference games. With huge battles ahead against Southern Miss, Tulsa, and Houston, there's still a long road ahead to determine if this will truly be a year to remember. Thank you.